All righty. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. Market's slowing down a little bit here. And I have something special. We have Matthew Tuttle from Tuttle Capital here. Matt, there's something new that's been hitting the markets that is quite the buzz. And judging that by that smile, you're happy about it too. You want to tell us about this new hot thing hitting the market? Yeah. So uh, so we finally did it. We launched the Jim Cramer ETFs. So we have S Jim, which is um, generating a lot of buzz. That's the inverse Kramer tracker ETF. We also have L Jim, which is the long Kramer tracker ETF, which is you know getting a little bit of interest on its own as well. Uh, so those just launched on Thursday, and uh, you know unfortunately Jim's on vacation, but I, I believe he does come back Thursday. So you know hopefully he'll have a comment or, or or two about it. And um, so that's, yeah, that's what's going on. So Matt, I got to ask on this. I, we've all joked about it and said it for years. I even think unusual Wells, he had something for a little while on that as well, but you guys actually did it. So how does it work overall? Like if, if someone wanted to come on, it's just like buying on the spy or some other ETF on that aspect of it, but does it track essentially everything? that he's doing to an extent of what's available out there? Or how, how does that process work? Because a lot of people, they've seen it, they see the name, but they're like, well, how does it work? Is it snake oil? You know, really tell us because I like it. I like it overall, but tell me how it works. Yeah, so what we're doing is every day we're watching him on CNBC in the morning. So, I mean, typically he's on at like 8.45 to 10. So we're watching that. Uh, we're watching what he tweets. And then we're watching Mad Money. And what we're looking for are definitive buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. <laughs> so, you know, if somebody calls him up on Mad Money and says, Jim, what do you think about NVIDIA? And he's hitting that buy, buy, buy button. Then S Jim is going short NVIDIA the next day at the open. And L Jim is going long NVIDIA the next day at the open. Um, you know, they're... There are other times where he's not clear, where, you know, David Faber may say, hey, Jim, what do you think about Alphabet's quarter? Oh, they had a great quarter. Chances are we're not going to do anything with that. I want clear, buy this, clear, sell this. And, you know, so I would expect every day that he's around, again, he's, he's away right at the moment, but every day he's around, we'd be adding new positions every morning and and taking out some of the older ones. And the idea is both portfolios, we keep them pretty fresh. So, you know, S Jim, I would expect to have 30 to 50 names. And L Jim, I would expect to have like 20 to 40 names. And, you know, we're constantly lopping off the older ones and adding to the newer ones. So let's say hypothetically that this was around last year we know it was a performance what is an exactly the best overall nothing against man it was a tough market on a lot of things what would a rough etf percentage be on something because everybody likes to benchmark the spx or the spy whatever they want to what's a what's a rough measure that one could suspect if this had went to fruition last year so you know tough to answer from the standpoint of you know, a few things. I mean, there's obviously compliance issues talking about hypothetical performance, um, but also, you know, tracking. And, and there are a lot of guys out there who, you know, have published some things. There's the unusual whales guys who publish some numbers. They're the inverse Kramer tracker, Twitter guys, the Kramer coin guys. Um, and then there's just kind of watching it. I mean, you know, you looked at you know, his call on crypto, for example, at the beginning of this year, um, you know, along with his call about meta last year and, you know, on and on and on and on, uh, you know, the the idea behind the SGM portfolio is it's going to be a long short portfolio. And, you know, the amount short versus long is going to vary based on how bullish she is. So, you know, chances are, it's always going to have some sort of short position. So having a short position last year most likely would have been better than being long only. 
Uh, uh, you know, and I like that. I, and we never know what's really going to happen throughout the market a thousand percent. But this gives us a good move. But Matt, this this brings a question overall is, do you think this is going to open the floodgates for a long, short style ETF for other big names within the industry, be it a Dalio, uh, a Simon? You know, do you think we'll start to see more uh, ETFs throughout there? I mean, you you guys have put together, I'm going to call this one the holy grail of one, and I love how it's come through, but do you think we may start to see some of those uh, come into the industry in the next two years, three years, something like that? Maybe. I, I'm, I'm dubious about that type of stuff, and I'll, I'll tell you why. But first off, I, I mean, let me tell you why I think this is so important. You know, a lot of people are going to look at SGM and think, okay, you know, this is just some gimmick. And yeah, and, and that's, you know, when we did Sark, we had a lot of that as well. Like, all right, this is a gimmick. This is mean spirited, all of that stuff. And I came out very early on and have continued to say, no, you know, yeah, if you don't like Kathy Wood and you want to buy Sark, great. I mean, we get paid on assets, go ahead and do it. But to me, that was a better hedge. S Jim is something entirely different. So, you know, I, I think people like us who have been in the market for years, you know, seen things, heard things, you know, we understand that the consensus is almost always wrong. And, you know, and, and there are a lot of reasons for that. I mean, number one, predicting the market's really tough. But number two, we tend to believe the most recent past is going to equal the future. So right now, what, the market's been up three days in a row. I bet you if you put CNBC on, you'd have a whole bunch of people all bulled up. And that may be the right way to go. It may not be the right way to go. I mean, I would argue it probably isn't. But you kind of have that issue. And so, you know, how do you monetize that, though? There's not never really been a good way to monetize it. The way I look at it, Jim Cramer is the consensus. And the beauty of Kramer, and this is not a dig at him in any way, shape, or form, he swings at every pitch, and but he has to swing at every pitch. That's the cool thing. You can't have a situation where you're calling up Mad Money and saying, hey, Jim, what do you think about NVIDIA? And he's like, well, you know what? I think that could either go up or I think it could go down. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, thanks, Jim. So he's got to swing at every pitch. So this gives you the ability to bet against the consensus. So the beauty is, as the market is going up, he's getting more and more bullish, along with everybody else. So S Jim is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. As the market's going down, he's getting more and more bearish with everybody else. And the it, S Jim's getting longer, longer, and longer. So it's a counter trend strategy. I think when you start bringing in other guys, you run into two problems. Like, I, you know, I can know what the hedge fund guys own, but I only know their longs and I only know it on a 45 day delay. To me, not a whole lot of value. You know, the, the cool thing about Jim is I know it right then and there. You know, he says something at six, I'm buying it at 930. Um, you know, Ray Dalio says something 45 days ago. I don't know that there's a lot of value there. And then you've got other guys who like, you know, people say, oh, what about Tom Lee? And, you know, Tom Lee comes on and says, I think the market's going up. And the problem with that is regardless of how good he is, there's still a 50-50 shot. He's going to be right. So that's, that's going to be a tough one to really fade. I like the fact that, you know, with, with Jim, I've got to struggle to cut the portfolio down. I've got too much to invest in versus like a Tom Lee or, you know, rich dad, poor dad, who's called 50 of the last two corrections, you know, where you, you, you're you just, you're buying the market or, or shorting the market. And again, they got a 50-50 chance. I like it. I like it. So for the average individual, if they wanted to, to to work with this, it seems like this is going to give them an opportunity at efficiency. And that's what I really like, because we've seen so many people across the Twitter sphere, Facebook, all, everything, all of the socials to there that they, they have asked before, like, OK, well, how can I do this? And this almost seems a great way to 
take advantage uh, of that market overall. Now, I guess the, the, the main question on something like this is, how long do you guys plan on having this ETF for? I mean, are we going to think, uh, you know, once Kramer decides to end his career, be it in one year or five years, then the ETF Z, is that, is that when uh, things would close up? Or do you think it would kind of shift over to some other stuff and maybe have a rename? What do you think? I mean, I think we'd have to look at that situation. My My initial thought would be we would look at switching it up and having a rename. And, you know, maybe we look at, you know, the fast money guys or, you know, things of that nature, or maybe, you know, somebody comes in and, and, and takes over. Um, you know, I would, my initial gut reaction would be not to shut it down, to have some other way to kind of capture this effect of the consensus being wrong. Because again, I think it is so powerful I think it is such a great portfolio diversifier. I want to be able to do it. Right now, Jim is the easiest package to do that with. I like it. I like it. So are you guys going to be, uh, uh, for those unaware, if you go to uh, TuttleCapital.com, they have an awesome section in there on uh, a bunch of different uh, white papers, blog setup, all of that on how they're doing so many other things. Are you guys going to be posting quarterly ideas of, okay, well, we started here in in uh, March and now we're here by April, May, June. Are you going to be doing that on a monthly, a quarterly basis, or is it just an idea of keep track of what's going on within the ETF itself? So we, we've got a couple of things. So the, the, the ETF site for the actual Kramer ETFs is KramerETFs.com. And what we have on there, along with TuttleCap.com, our main site, is a way you can sign up to get the trades emailed to you. So every day we're going to email out the trades that we did. Um, again, he's on vacation. So the email we sent out Friday was no trades. The email we'll send out today, unless he tweets something, is no trades. But once he comes back, that email will be populated on a daily basis. So you can follow that. Um, we're going to continue to post financial content. Um, we're going to have more and more of that. I plan on writing a book. Uh, so, you know, that'll be out there as well when I actually get it done and, you know, we'll continue to kind of build out all of that information. I love it. I love it. All right, Matt, I want to be respectful of your time overall. If people want to find out more information about how they can either a get involved with you guys for putting some of these awesome stuff to the market or B figure out just how to work with this inverse Kramer, uh, ETF here. How can they keep a hold of you guys? Yeah, so Kramer ETFs for the for the ETF site, Tuttle Cap for our main site, and at Tuttle Capital is my handle on Twitter. Tend to be pretty active there, um, and want to start getting more active there as well. So any of those places. I love it. I love it, ladies and gents. I you know, in full disclosure, I am going to be playing with some of those ETFs on my uh, own personal accounts there. And let's just see. It's a it's a fun way to work with the stuff. So Matt, I look forward to touching base with you again on the next conversation, but uh, let's see in 60, 90 days where all of this goes and with some hard data points. I think that's going to be a fun conversation. I want to sincerely thank you for putting some good content out there and really bringing something unique to the trading world overall. So thank you for doing that. And I look forward to talking with you again on the next one, my friend. All right. Thanks, man.